Side G. Hope you guys are all doing super well. It's your boy Big Dick Dave, and today I'm gonna go through the top men fragrances that I think you should have for 2020. I just love collecting colognes, eau de toilettes, eau de parfums, and parfums. And I think it's a pretty good addiction because uh, hygiene's important. You wanna smell good. Especially since it's 2020, it's the start of a new decade. There's no reason to smell like shit. Or Nuk Mom. That's fish sauce, by the way. So for the guys watching, I hope this video is very helpful. For the girls watching, you can also continue watching because you can buy some of these fragrances for your boyfriend or for your dad. I think you guys should have multiple fragrances. It took me a while to understand this, but different smells go with different moods. Let's say for example, if I'm going clubbing versus I'm going to the gym. Clubbing, you want to be obnoxious. You want to, everyone to smell you. But when you're at the gym, you want to keep it low key. You know, you just want something fresh, something light. Definitely not something that's going to piss people off. So having different fragrances for different events, different moods, that's a good thing. So let's get into it. Versace Eros. This is an eau de toilette. This is an honorable mention for me because something happened. So the first time I smelled this guy, I was like, hell yeah, this is a clubbing fragrance for sure. I don't think it works too well, just casual, like you're walking around. It's really, really, really intense, so be careful how many times you spray this on yourself. So I wore this on New Year's Eve, and everything was good until the next morning. Now obviously, your boy got drunk, Dave. I didn't have time to take a shower, so it stayed on me overnight, and then the next morning when I woke up, the smell of it, plus me being hungover, it made me want to puke. It just kind of threw me off, because all I could smell is like the residue of this. So that's the only reason why it's honorable mention other than that wear it when you're going out but make sure you take a shower at night next up we have Tom Ford Neroli Portofino as you can see I love using this one half the bottle is already gone now this falls into the fresh category there's fruits it's citrusy the notes for this guy is we got bergamot, we got lavender, it's very delicious. And from personal experience, you can go off with this one. Like five sprays, six sprays. It's nothing like the Versace Arrows. You gotta take it easy with that one. This one, you go off. I think this is like an everyday type of fragrance. Probably not for the winter time, maybe like summer, springish. It's a little bit more on the pricey side, especially since it's Tom Ford. Tom Ford has so many fragrances. So if you don't have one yet, I feel like this is a good uh, like starter one. This next one is probably my all time favorite. Spice Bomb by Victor and Rolf. The original, by the way. I know a lot of these fragrance channels says get the extreme, but nah. I stick with the OG. I think it smells the best. I love the bottle design. It's kind of like a grenade, so you can't really take this traveling anywhere. This has easily been my go-to winter fragrance. It works so well in the cold weather. It's like super spicy. It has a little bit of citrus in there too. If I were to recommend anything from this video is to get this one, the Spice Bomb Victor and Rolf. This bottle cost me about like $110, so not bad, not bad. You know what, screw it. I wanna smell like this today. Next one I have is Yves Saint Laurent La Nuit de l'Homme. It's an eau de toilette, and as I said in previous videos, this is what you wanna wear if you're trying to get naughty. Great for dates, late night, going to movies. It's a nighttime fragrance, the girls love this, and I feel like it's a little bit more on the mature side, you know? You got cardamom, cedarwood in this, and the bottle is about like $125, so kind of like the spice bomb. Next up, we have another eau de toilette. We have Dolce & Gabbana The One. This is a little bit more pricey. This bottle costs $155. This one's so sexy. If you wear this one, a girl's gonna think you are very confident. This is more on the business casual side, I feel like. You can't be rocking this with a t-shirt. You got grapefruit, you got tobacco, some cedar in there. It's just an amazing fragrance. The first time I wore this, my girlfriend loved it. She's like, you need to wear this more often. It's not too obnoxious unless you're like really up close with someone, so you don't have to worry about that. If I had to describe a dude that wears this, he always has the perfect haircut. They take their time to put together an outfit. So yeah, for me, I would wear these like more on special events. Now this next one I have to add it to the list because it is known as the king of all men fragrances. This is Creed Aventus. It's the most expensive bottle I have. This costed me like $611. Way too expensive. I don't recommend that you guys buy this. Obviously it smells amazing. I've only worn this guy once and let me tell you the time I did. I sprayed it three times way too much. This shit is so powerful. If you walk into a room with three sprays on you, the entire room is smelling you. I think the perfect amount is like half a spray and good luck getting that. Pretty much if you smell this off everyone, you know they are rich. They have a lot of money. But it's nice to have my collection because it is like known as the king. Next up we have Santal 33. This was like $300 so a little bit more on the pricey side. This is probably one of my most complimented fragrances and it's unisex so anyone can wear it. And this is just your fresh smell. You can wear anywhere. It's from Le Labo, which makes those crazy expensive candles. Here's one I got, Santal 26, and as you can see, I've 
pretty much burned through it all. This shit was $100 for a candle. Next up, we have Tao Del Mez. This is my go-to right after the gym fragrance. I like to spray this on. It's earthy. It's got a little bit of woods in it. A little peppery scent to it. I'm not even too sure if I wear it correctly because after the gym, I'm kind of sweaty. But I like how it works together. It just comes off really clean and just sets me on the right track to start my day. Next, we got a nice, warm, spicy one. This is Tom Ford Noir Extreme. This is an eau de parfum, so be careful. It's strong. Don't spray too much on yourself. I love the design of the bottle. Look how sleek it looks. This works great for like business meetings or anytime you're meeting new people and you want to just show off like, yeah, I'm the alpha male or you just want to show assertiveness. Tom Ford Noir Extreme is the way to go. It's like cardamom, sandalwood, very spicy, and uh, a very pricey too. This is like $235. The guy that wears this knows what he wants. You gotta be very confident. Last but not least, a banger. We got Aqua de Gio Perfumo. A lot of people have the original of this. The Aqua de Gio, it's like a clear white bottle. This is just like a way better version of that, and when you wear this, you know you're, you turn into a man. Although it is a parfum, which means it should be very intense, it's not. You can spray this like three times and you won't be annoying to people around you. Personally, I I haven't even worn it that much because I have so many fragrances to choose from. So in 2020, I definitely want to try using this a lot more. It gets a ton of praise in the fragrance community. So like, obviously for a reason. Yeah, that smells delicious. It's really good. Um, yeah, Aqua de Gio. Perfumo by Giorgio Armani. Hope you guys enjoyed that review of the top men fragrances I think you should have for 2020. Comment down below the fragrance that you guys are using right now. If this is your first video, consider clicking that subscribe button, turning on post notifications. I hope you guys found this video helpful in any way possible, and I will see you guys very soon. Hey!